Welcome to a presentation on surface area of revolution. Let's start by taking a look at an animation to develop the idea. If we have a function and rotate it about the x-axis, it will produce a solid as we see here. And our goal is to determine the surface area of this solid. Now I do have to be careful not to confuse this with the volume of a solid. And the idea we'll use to derive the surface area of this solid will be very similar to the idea that we use to determine the arc length of a curve, except now we'll use strips instead of segments. So if you take a look at this red band, the idea is if we were to determine the surface area of these red bands, it would approach the surface area of the solid. So we should be thinking about how would we determine the surface area of one of these strips. What we'll do is find the circumference and then multiply it by the width of the band or strip. So with that thought in mind, if we wanted to determine the surface area of this solid, we could divide it up into multiple strips. So we might have one here, maybe another here, another here, maybe one more here on the end. Each of these bands would be called a frustum, which we see here above. And the surface area for a frustum is equal to 2 pi r l, where r is the average of the two radii. This would be r1, this would be r2, and l would be the length of this segment here. So looking at our sketch, we could call this L1, L2, L3, L4, and so on. The idea is if we find the surface area of more and more frustums, it will approach the surface area of the solid. Another way to express this would be to say that the change in the surface area would be equal to 2 pi r times delta L, which is the change in this segment here. And this would be the change from just one single frustum. So if we want to sum n frustums, we could say that the sum from i equals 1 to n of delta s would equal the sum from i to 1 of 2, two pi times r sub i times delta l sub i. Now let's consider r sub i. R sub i is the average of the two radii of the frustum. So if we take a look at this blue frustum, R sub i would be the average radii or the average function values from here and here. But due to the intermediate value theorem, we can state that there's some function value in this interval that would be equal to that average radius. So we're gonna go ahead and replace R sub i with f of x sub i. And then delta l is the length of each of these segments here which is the same as the segments we use to determine arc length. So we're gonna go ahead and replace delta L sub i with delta small s sub i. Again, there's some function value in this interval that would be equal to R sub i, so we'll call it F of x sub i. And then delta L sub i is the same as delta small s sub i for the change in arc length. And now you'll probably see where we're headed here. We're gonna take the limit as n approaches infinity of this sum, which will give us our definite integral. So the limit on the left does give us the surface area. Two pi would be the constants. And then we're left with a definite integral of f of x times the square root of one minus f prime of x squared, which remember is equal to our arc length. Let's go ahead and formalize this idea. The surface area of revolution formed by revolving the curve about the x-axis is given as follows. It's equal to two pi times the def integral from a to b of f of x ds, or two pi times the def integral from a to b of y ds. Notice this is expressed a little bit differently than we saw on the previous screen. And what's happening here is that ds is the arc length part of the formula. And arc length can be found two different ways. One with respects to x or with respects to y. And if we find it in terms of x, we have to express the radius in terms of x. And if we find it in terms of y, we have to express the radius in terms of y. And if the curve is rotated about the y-axis, we have a similar option where ds here and here can be found 
in terms of x or y, but again, if it's in terms of x, the radius would be x, and if it's in terms of y, the radius would be expressed in terms of y. So we do have specific formulas based upon the axis of rotation, but we do have a choice when it comes to ds. Let's go and take a look at an example. We want to determine the surface area generated by revolving f of x equals one third x cubed about the x-axis on the interval from zero to two. So here's the graph of the function, and we want to determine the surface area of this solid rotated about the x-axis. Well, the surface area is going to be equal to the def integral from a to b of f of x ds, as we saw on the previous screen. And you can see over here in red, I decided to use the arc length piece that's written in terms of x. So before we try to apply this, notice we do have to find the derivative and then square it. So f prime of x will be equal to multiply by three and then subtract one from the exponent. That'll just be x squared. So f prime of x squared is just gonna be equal to x to the fourth. So let's go ahead and see if we can apply this now. Surface area should equal two pi times the def integral from zero to two of f of x, well f of x is one third x cubed. Times the square root of one plus x to the fourth. Let's go ahead and pull this one third out and also rewrite this in rational exponent form. So we'd have two thirds pi x to the third then all of this to the one-half power. Now we're gonna to have to perform u substitution here, where u is gonna be equal to one plus x to the fourth. So du is gonna be equal to four x cubed dx. Notice our integrand has x cubed dx in it, so I'm gonna go ahead and divide both sides by four. So that tells us that one fourth du is equal to x cubed dx. Let's go ahead and rewrite this in terms of u. We'd have two thirds pi. Now x cubed dx is the same as one fourth du. So let's pull the one fourth out. And we have the du here. And then remember this is u, so we have u to the one half. So out here we're gonna have one sixth pi. And if we integrate this, we'll have u to the three halves divided by three halves. So let's go ahead and simplify this and rewrite it in terms of x. So here we're gonna have one sixth times the reciprocal of three halves, that'd be two thirds. One sixth times two thirds, it's gonna be one ninth. So I'll have one ninth pi And then we have u to the three halves, but u is one plus x to the fourth. We need to evaluate this at the limits of integration, which were two and zero. Let's go ahead and take this over to the next screen to continue. So first we'll replace x with two, so I have one plus two to the fourth the three halves power minus one plus zero to the fourth to the three halves power. So we'll have one ninth pi. Looks like we're gonna have two to the fourth is 16 plus one, that is 17 to the three halves power minus, here we'll have one to the three halves power, which would just be one. And this should be the surface area of that solid Let's go back and take a look. Again, here was the function rotated about the x-axis, and so that value is going to be the surface area of this solid. Okay, that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you for watching.